disposable personal income after taxes and consumption or spending track each other pretty closely. This is why the consumption function and equation there relates consumption, disposable personal income works. The equation uses a constant value for the intercept. We'll talk about this more later. And proportion of the change in income to determine a level of consumption. The ratio of change in consumption to the change in disposable personal income is what we call marginal propensity to consume, or MPC. It tells us if households earn an extra dollar of after tax income, how much of that income are they likely to use on current consumption? We can investigate the same question with savings, which are the portion of disposable personal income not used on consumption. The saving function is similar to the consumption function, except this equation describes the relationship between savings and disposable personal income. Similarly, the marginal propensity to save, or MPS, is the ratio of the change in savings to the change in disposable personal income. Remember, in a prior video, I talked about how interest rates determine our demand for money in a macroeconomic model. Well, now we see how, after holding interest rates constant, extra income can change someone's desire to spend or save. I can already tell you, although your textbook teaches these functions as if they're linear over income, a lot of evidence suggests that the marginal propensity to save and consume varies at least at the micro level based on household income. There's likely a diminishing return to each after-tax dollar we earn. After all, what more a multi-billionaire purchase with $999 billion and $1 that they couldn't have purchased with the prior income. All of this leads to a natural question, though. People determine their saving and consumption behavior based on short-term fluctuations in income or based on their expected income over a longer horizon, maybe even a lifetime. The latter is called the permanent income hypothesis. It suggests that households look over the longer horizon, like their lifetime income potential, to determine their short-term consumption levels. The closing hypothesis is the current income one, which suggests that short-term changes to income will have an impact on short-term consumption decisions. This question is pretty important because something like, say, a fiscal stimulus package that puts money back into the account of households may not have its intended inflationary effect if households behave like their lifetime income hasn't changed much save the stimulus check. Other factors determine consumption too, though, and may have and may change how much households consume at any given amount of disposable income. For example, the wealth effect, which can cause households to consume more or less as their real wealth changes. Expectations about the future, too, can cause households to save or consume more. Fortunately, those expectations can become self-fulfilling. Household consumption makes up around 70% of the economy. If households start to act like the party's over, the party's over. 